Hey viewers, this is Dr. Sumit Bakshi. This is next video in the series of probability sampling, that is cluster sampling. This method most often confused with stratified sampling, but in reality, it is altogether different method. It is probability sampling used when population is widely spread in terms of geographical areas. Researchers most commonly select pre-existing clusters as sampling units. In this sampling method, researchers divide the whole population into cluster and then use simple random sampling to select few clusters as a sample. Now the process of cluster sampling is First step is create clusters out of the population. Then researchers need to select randomly few clusters as samples. Then third step would be to study on each element of the selected clusters. Let me explain this through an example. Suppose I want to conduct survey to know opinion of teacher educators across Maharashtra in India about new educational policy 2020. So here my population would be teacher educators across Maharashtra. Here if I want to go with simple random sampling, I have to have access to all the teacher educators in Maharashtra, which itself is a clumsy process. To make this process convenient, easier and feasible, I will go with cluster sampling. But I need to keep few things in my mind before creating the clusters. Clusters created should be true representative of the population. Different clusters created should have similar characteristics. Clusters should be mutually homogeneous but internally heterogeneous. Clusters should be mutually exclusive. All clusters combined should build population. Now I will divide my whole population into different clusters. Here I will take different colleges of education as different clusters. Now because I want to survey teacher education, it is recommended to create cluster by teacher educator. That way it will fulfill all these points. If I take different colleges of education as cluster, this will make these clusters true representative with similar characteristics. They must be having similar kind or level of knowledge. These would be mutually homogeneous as they all represent same population. All must be having same number of teacher educators with similar qualification, but internally heterogeneous. As within a college, there will be different teacher educators having different opinions. They will be mutually exclusive because one teacher educator would belong to one and only one college of education. Also, all the teacher educator colleges combined will make whole population. Now these are my clusters, different colleges of education. This was my first step of cluster sampling to create clusters out of the population. Now the second step would be through simple random sampling, I need to select few clusters out of these clusters. Let's assume I draw the sample, the college 5, cluster 5, 7, and 15 as my sample using technique of simple random sampling. This was second step. These three colleges I selected as sample unit was second step. Now the third step would be I need to survey each teacher educator from these three colleges. Within one college each teacher educator I need to survey. I need to survey all the teacher educators from these three colleges to collect my data. Now the advantages of cluster sampling, it is best used for widely geographically spread population. It is time and cost efficient. It is more convenient and practical method of sampling. It can increase external validity of the study because clusters are drawn randomly from a larger population. It is useful when we do not have access to all the subjects of the population. Now there are few disadvantages also. If clusters are not true representative of the population then it can affect internal validity of the study. Sample can be biased and non-representative at times. 
it can become much more complex in planning. That's all with cluster sampling. Thank you.